Hello students, uh, this is going to be a series of lectures on electrical machines. Uh, in the part 1, uh, we are going to, today we are going to learn about uh, DC generators. Right, there are four uh, important laws which are associated with DC generators which we need to understand first. The first one is uh, Maxwell's corkscrew rule. Okay, uh, here uh, we all know uh, how to tighten a screw. Right, if, if we uh, move it clockwise, uh, the screw is going to uh, advance uh, towards the down in, in this particular case, the way the diagram is shown here. If we, if we tighten the screw in the clockwise direction, the screw is going to advance uh, downwards, right. So, uh, so this uh, defines the, uh, the same philosophy can be used to define the direction of magnetic field. So, if it's an, if, if, if we place an uh, current carrying conductor in the vertical direction and the current is flowing from top to bottom then it will create a magnetic field and the direction of the magnetic field will be clockwise so uh, so if the current flows from top to top bottom in a vertical conductor so you will have a clock clockwise magnetic field setup right so this is what uh, gives that uh, this uh, screw rule uh, gives the direction of the magnetic field when the current is uh, flowing through a uh, conductor okay uh, so the important uh, second law which we need to know is known as the fleming's left hand rule right so uh, here uh, the, in the picture it show a left hand is shown here and, and all the three uh, fingers the thumb index and the middle finger are placed at right angles to each other at 90 degree to each other so if the magnetic field uh, is indicated by the index finger so you have a permanent magnet which is placed here so your index finger uh, is indicates the direction of the magnetic field and then uh, if you have an uh, current which is flowing in the direction of uh, in this direction where your current carrying conductor is shown here which is indicated by your uh, middle finger right then a force is uh, the conductor experiences a force on it right so that force will be in the direction of your thumb finger so this is known as uh, Fleming's left hand rule so uh, there is the third rule uh, which is known as Fleming's right hand rule right uh, here again your right hand is a uh, place shown out here where uh, all the three fingers the thumb index and the middle finger are placed at right angles to each other they are all orthogonal to each other uh, in this case if the current is uh, uh, if the if there is a magnetic field uh, which is uh, shown by the uh, aligned with your index finger right uh, and the motion of the force like in this case we are assuming that the uh, there is a motion in the, the conductor so if the motion uh, is in the direction of your thumb finger then a current will be induced in the conductor and that current will be in the direction of your uh, middle finger so this is the uh, third law which you uh, need to know before understanding the basics of a uh, dc generator right and and four uh, and the fourth uh, uh, is known as the lens law okay uh, here it says an emf induced uh, while a uh, 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 current carrying conductor right moves in a magnetic field the emf induced in that conductor okay or in the coil uh, will be uh, proportional to the number of lines uh, which it is cutting so what is important here uh, here is there are two uh, important concepts which we need to understand here first it is not the flux which is uh, linked with the coil which is important but the rate at which the uh, flux is uh, cut that is if you are going to simply place a conductor uh, a coil into a magnetic field there will be no emf induced okay there has to be the coil has to move that is there has to be an, a rate of change of flux okay that is one important thing and the second thing is uh, when this coil moves uh, in the magnetic field okay an emf will be induced and because of that emf there will be a current in the coil and that current is going to create one more field okay whenever a current flows into the inductor it is going to create an uh, electric field a magnetic field so that magnetic field and the original magnetic field uh, they will oppose each other okay so that will they will oppose each other so that is very very uh, important okay so that uh, we what we understand stand out here is the emf will be induced in such a manner that because of that ems a, a current would flow and a magnetic field will be generated that magnetic field will oppose the original magnetic field which was there 
right so these are the four uh, important laws which we need to know so before proceeding with the uh, DC basics of DC uh, generator now this is a simple loop generator where we have placed one north pole there's a magnet here where there is a uh, south pole here and we have placed a uh, single uh, coil here so this coil is going to uh, rotate in this uh, uh, in this so we need to have an, a mechanical drive so the mechanical drive is going to move this coil in the say say in the clockwise direction so what happens so uh, if you see uh, the top portion of the coil uh, here right which is indicated by the black horizontal portion uh, this is going to move uh, along the direction of the uh, field initially and then it is going to cut across uh, the uh, field right whereas in the bottom uh, portion of the coil it is going to move opposite to the uh, uh, field initially and then it is going to uh, cut the uh, uh, you know, field from bottom to top whereas the top portion of the coil it is initially going to move uh, parallel to the field and then it is going to cut the field from the top to bottom whereas the bottom one is going to bottom portion of the coil is going to cut from pot so if you see uh, uh, always uh, the emf induced in these two coils will be uh, um, opposite to each other right it, it will not be the uh, same direction suppose uh, towards us uh, in the first coil uh, if a positive voltage is induced here and the negative voltage is induced on the far end uh, for the bottom coil uh, since it's moving in the opposite direction a negative voltage will be induced towards the near end and positive voltage will be induced in the far end so these two voltages actually they keep uh, adding up each other so you will have a uh, net uh, voltage available uh, at, at these two points where you are collecting the voltage whereas for these two vertical limbs of the coil if you see uh, they are always in sync so the same voltage will be uh, always be induced in these coils like in the top if, if in the in this vertical limb if a po on the top if a positive voltage is induced in the bottom a negative voltage is induced similarly here also it, a positive voltage will be induced and a negative voltage will be induced in the bottom portion of this limb uh, because they are uh, moving in the same direction so they will cancel out each other so they will not contribute towards any uh, voltage output okay so the voltage output will always be contributed by these two uh, now or in this case uh, in this in this particular picture it is presently these limbs are uh, horizontal ones so these uh, horizontal limbs will uh, produce voltages which are opposite to each other but they add up because they are connected in series so you get a net uh, voltage output right and and since this coil is going to be an uh, rotating uh, item right and it's not going to uh, remain stationary so but whereas the voltage where you need to pick up uh, has to be a stationary okay so that has to be put so the, the collection terminals has to be uh, static so that you connect an, a load resistance so we use an a carbon brush so this is this is a metallic uh, uh, cylinder kind of thing which is attached to the uh, end of these uh, one one metal there are two metallic cylinders here one which is attached to one end of the coil and and the next one next end of the coil is attached to this next cylinder so these two cylinders they keep moving it but you have one uh, spring loaded carbon brush which is touching that so this will collect the current so these are stationary this carbon brushes will be stationary so a current will uh, flow into the uh, resistor right so now this is this is going to rotate like this and it is going to cut the electric fields and then you have an emf which is available which is picked up by these two uh, car carbon brushes okay uh, now let, let's see uh, in what position what kind of voltages will be uh, induced in these magnets so now in this vertical position uh, if you see uh, there will be minimum voltage uh, which will be induced like if you see this coil is going to uh, move uh, from say left to right the top motion but it is going to move parallel to the field so the uh, the rate of change of flux is very very minimal in this position right although uh, maximum flux flux is linked with the coil in this uh, position but when the coil is moving at this particular position the the coil is not going to cut the uh, fields it is moving parallel to the uh, field but however as it, it is as this uh, particular limb starts coming uh, from top to bottom it is going to cut the uh, lines so you will have slowly slowly uh, the voltage uh, increasing here so when it is in the 
uh, horizontal position if you see at this position there is a zero flux linkage right but when it is going to uh, move from this position you will find that maximum number of lines it's going to uh, cut so you will have a maximum voltage at this particular position so as the coil again moves here and it comes down here it is going to be in the minimum most position uh, it is here the, it is going to be again moving parallel to the field or uh, uh, bit it's going to be in the opposite direction doesn't matter but since it is not going to be uh, there is no um, uh, rate of change of flux in this position so that's why the EM induced EMF is almost zero so now he coming back here now it is again cutting the uh, field in the opposite direction now it's going to cut the field from bottom to top so you have uh, the negative most maximum uh, coming out here the negative peak is available when it is at the at this position at this position against the flux linkage is zero but the rate of change of flux is going to be maximum so you have an uh, sinusoidal output coming here from so you have a resistance out here now you have an uh, sinusoidal so when it moves 360 degrees so you have one full uh, cycle sinusoidal output available uh, from these two carbon brushes right so uh, if you see uh, now what we can do is since we are interested uh, in this particular uh, class we want to make a DC uh, output we require a DC output so we can either use a uh, rectifier diode or an SCR to rectify these outputs but that would be very very inefficient way of doing it so uh, what we can do is if you see uh, this is an known as something known as split ring. So uh, what is done is uh, this is uh, instead of having two cylinders now we have a an, an, uh, single cylinder which is uh, coupled here with these two coils here and in between the curve there is an insulator there is a mica insulator and you have the two brushes here. So when this is uh, rotating here right so obviously when this coil uh, reaches at this place this contact of the brushes uh, changes from this conductor to this conductor out here because this is known as a split ring right you are using uh, two brushes out here and then you have this is known as a commutator or a split ring here now there is an insulator so when this rotates out here so this brush initially which was taking the current from uh, this particular uh, limb of the coil now it's going to take from this leg right from this leg so there is an uh, switching of the um, the way the current uh, uh, tapping is taken so it, it rectifies the uh, output voltage out here in in this manner right so that is how uh, this is this acts like an uh, rectification of an uh, sinusoidal signal so you will get an output which is unidirectional although it will still be an, an sinusoidal kind of thing but still it will be unidirectional you don't have the uh, negative things coming out here right it, it will be more uh, clear in the next slide see uh, here this is the coil which is placed in this direction initially say the current is flowing from a b it is coming here through brush b1 uh, through ring r1 through b1 brush the current is flowing from m to l and it is coming back here through r2 uh, through b2 brush to r2 it's going to cd and it's making a, a path here now when the coil is reached in the other direction if you see now in this slip now a b the current direction has reversed now it's going from uh, bottom to top whereas in dc it's going from top to bottom but what has happened here this current from dc comes here now if you see the ring position also has changed because of this rotation it is a single cylinder now here now uh, initially r1 and r2 were r1 was making a contact with b1 r2 was making a contact with b2 but in this position r2 is making a contact with uh, b1 so the current will come from r2 and it will again flow in the load from left to right from m to l so the direction of the current remains uh, uh, same so it is kind of uh, rectification which is happening out here so with uh, using a, uh, a simple uh, split ring now we can uh, rectify the current and make it unidirectional okay so now uh, one purpose has been solved that and uh, now we are having kind of uh, uh, dc output uh, however there are a large number of uh, uh, ripples out here right so uh, let me just uh, before proceeding let me uh, show you here see uh, this is how the coil is moving out here it is cutting the magnetic uh, lines of force so if you uh, try to measure the voltage there are two different uh, rings out here which are placed out here right uh, from each of the uh, end of the coils so if you see this voltage is going to positive 
uh, and then it goes to the negative side and and you have an, an a sinusoidal kind of signal you can also see it from here that when now see it is it, in the parallel position uh, the, to the field and you know, it will be zero uh, right when the when the when the when it is parallel it is it is zero and when it is uh, cutting across many lines it will be the maximum so you can uh, see that what is happening you have an sinusoidal kind of thing so this is uh, now this is you have placed a commutator so now if you see there is a commutator there is an insulation and uh, you are uh, made it into an uh, split uh, split ring right so it is just two two uh, different uh, rings are there and and the same brushes are used so if you see now the current it is only unidirectional you see the waveform out here it is a uh, kind of uh, uh, rectified output it's a rectified output unidirectional currents are uh, and voltage is available here so uh, this is uh, what uh, no, uh, we are trying to achieve here by this uh, split ring okay unidirectional current and unidirectional uh, voltage now uh, coming back to uh, now uh, instead of having a, a single uh, coil uh, you can have uh, multiple coils like this right this is known as armature core okay there is a core and if you see the, here there are so many coils which are shown so there are uh, coils like uh, diametrically opposite these two uh, they form one coil and so there are many many coils out here so what happens if there are uh, many coils but you are uh, all the coils are uh, connected to each of these uh, uh, small small uh, in the in the commuter there are, there are small small segments and each of the segments are uh, isolated from each other using a sun mica so there is an insulator but when you are uh, placing a, a brush and collecting the output voltage you are collecting only from uh, one of those uh, segments only at any given time but uh, and, uh, so it is so happens that uh, only the element which is giving the uh, peak voltage you are going to uh, collect the uh, voltage uh, from those uh, uh, elements only right so you will find that see see if there is one coil here okay that is going to negative by but by that time you are switching over to a different segment so you are collecting the peak voltage from that segment uh, again when that particular segment is you know the voltage is dropping you are going to collect it from the next segment so if you see by uh, making this kind of uh, commutator uh, arrangement and, and and using only uh, two brushes you can uh, pick up voltage from the uh, peak of these uh, the peak voltages from various uh, loops okay various coils okay they're all independent coils so we're going to pick up so each coil is going to get connected to the output brush only when there is a peak voltage in in those coils and rest of the time that coil is not connected at all anywhere uh, it is it is going to remain uh, open loop so if you see now you get a uh, better dc voltage here okay and the ripples are lesser okay initially the ripple was from uh, zero to peak now you will find uh, small only small ripples and you get a uh, much better uh, dc the net dc voltage also will be uh, higher in this case if you take the average so okay uh, another thing which we need to uh, remember out here is we are not uh, we don't generally use a north pole and a south pole a magnetic uh, and a, a conventional magnetic poles okay uh, we generate a magnetic field by using field coils okay field coils are nothing but there will be an uh, a metallic uh, core on which a coil is wound a conductor is uh, conductor coil is wound on that and then you pass a current there so uh, in in lieu of a magnet again and we have a current carrying uh, loops there so the magnet are also formed by using uh, magnetic uh, uh, by using current carrying uh, uh, coils okay so we need to uh, remember that aspect also okay uh, now uh, also uh, we don't have only uh, generally we don't have uh, only one set of poles we have more than one set of poles like you have a north pole south pole again a north pole south pole so the fields will be uh, set here okay uh, again the advantage uh, here if you see this is again uh, these are the cores and you have north pole south pole many poles are shown out here and then and uh, to make that as a magnet on on to the meta metallic portion you have an a field winding which is an, uh, shown out here right so uh, if you see this is again there are one two three four now four uh, coils uh, four magnets are there so inside which the armature will be placed now the additional magnetic poles have the same effect on ripple as did the armature coils that is more number of coil coils uh, will in a single uh, rotation 
uh, of the uh, if of a, of a coil it will cut the magnetic lines of force many times so it will have uh, uh, more uh, it will it will have uh, the sinusoidal frequency will increase but the ripple will come down okay so that is what so uh, in addition the increased number of stronger magnetic field uh, it also uh, allows to increase the output voltage because the coils cut more number of lines per revolution right so because there are uh, uh, the more number of magnetic lines now the per revolution the, the, so the net dc voltage is going to be uh, higher uh, with the, this kind of arrangement so you have uh, more than uh, one set of uh, poles generally right so uh, now let, let us just uh, speak for two three minutes on the construction details of a dc generator before we take on the operation principle of operation right uh, yoke your yoke is the outer case okay so this outer case uh, is acts as a me mechanical support it has low uh, low reluctance for magnetic flux that means it it should allow uh, smooth passage of magnetic fluxes that's what it's known as high permeability because of ultimately we are going to uh, mount uh, uh, many magnets out here magnet means the uh, field poles we are going to mount the uh, poles so uh, between them uh, if if there has to be a uh, magnetic uh, line of force have to uh, smoothly pass so that is why we use high, high, permeable, uh, high permeability uh, material out there okay for small machines generally cast iron is uh, used and for large machine cast uh, steel is used right and then uh, you have this uh, magnetic uh, core uh, okay these are the pole cores onto which the coil is mounted. so this core is generally uh, made up of uh, laminated uh, sheets which are there are several laminated sheets and okay laminated sheet means there are thin metallic uh, sheets which are uh, laminated and then they are placed together so uh, so they don't allow uh, since it is laminated there can't be a current which is flowing from they're insulated from each other so why we don't use a single metallic block is otherwise if you use a sin single metallic block there will be eddy currents induced uh, in this okay so whenever there is a current flowing in the coil which is wound over that there will be some current which will be induced which is known as the eddy current so if that eddy current uh, uh, moves into this uh, metallic core then it will uh, cause uh, heat dissipation and energy loss so we don't want any uh, current flowing in these uh, uh, cores okay uh, we j but it has to be metallic uh, because to facilitate the magnetic uh, lines of force okay so that is why uh, we use that th uh, thin sheet so it remains so the isolation doesn't uh, really affect the magnetic flux but it will prevent electrical currents so isolated met metallic sheets will serve the purpose of uh, high magnetic fields whereas it will prevent eddy current so this is how and and then you will have a shoe uh, with which you are going to uh, mount it onto the uh, outer uh, yoke okay this is the uh, armature so if you see this is the armature it has got a uh, multiple uh, these are all the uh, multiple coils which are there and each of these coils are separated using some uh, insulators so there'll be uh, multiple uh, coils out here right uh, spaced around the 360 degree so the what is the purpose uh, purpose of the uh, armature core is to support the armature windings right to rotate the conductors in the magnetic field it is cylindrical or drum shaped made up of high permeability again this this core needs to be of high permeability uh, each stamping is separated from its name by varnisher because you know, it has to be uh, each of these coils you can't have short circuit each of these coils have to work uh, independently right so uh, laminated to reduce eddy currents again we are talking about the core material right uh, hysteresis loss and eddy current loss has to be minimized uh, ventilating ducts are provided to dissipate heat uh, because there will be some uh, heat generated so there are some wind now the armature winding on top of this core uh, this is the core okay on top of that and then you have these all these windings now we are talking about the windings okay so uh, in these windings are made up of copper or uh, aluminum and emf is induced in these uh, windings okay and these windings are also insulated from each other right and generally you have uh, these windings which on top of which you have a uh, varnish coating so as and when this varnish uh, co uh, coating goes bad you will have an, uh, a short circuit currents in your dc generator uh, which is not uh, healthy so once in a while uh, we have to do an uh, insulation check uh, is done between the winding and the body so if this varnish goes bad then you need to remove this coil and do a rewinding with a uh, uh, proper uh, varnish coated uh, uh, aluminum wires or copper wires according 
right so the armature windings uh, these are the uh, different uh, armature windings each of these coils as we have learned earlier only output is taken only from uh, one of these coils at any uh, given time so these are all uh, to be uh, independent uh, uh, coils you can see right now there are uh, two types of armature windings uh, one is known as lap winding okay in, in lap winding there are uh, several windings which are uh, several coils which are all uh, connected in uh, parallel okay so these are known as the uh, lap uh, winding okay uh, uh, if i see here if i go back here here i'm talking about this this bunch of uh, the, they're all uh, connected in uh, parallel within the single uh, set okay uh, not i'm talking not talking uh, these are all independent ones within this each there's not it's not a single uh, wire it is a bunch of uh, wires okay also all these bunch of wires okay for a single set okay so there are n number of coils so each number of coils there are uh, n number of uh, uh, conductors which are uh, placed there so those are all uh, here connected in uh, parallel so uh, the number of uh, parallel paths are generally equal to the number of poles okay so a equal to b so this is how uh, so what if you have these coils connected in parallel it will uh, increase the current capacity obviously they are all in parallel right so each will uh, conduct some current so it will increase the current capacity of each uh, winding okay so these are used as a starter motor of all uh, motor automobiles because uh, the starter motors initially when we uh, start the engine so it requires a huge amount of uh, torque is required so it will consume large large amount of uh, current starting current will be very high so you require a uh, parallel connections of conductors right the second kind of uh, winding is uh, known as wave winding in which the all the different uh, coils are connected in a uh, series out here like this right if you connect it in uh, series and there will be a total number of parallel path in this motor will be uh, two so this is the kind of finding which we do here so since these coils are connected in series uh, and there will be emf induced in all these coils they will add up so these are used for uh, generating uh, the for where high voltage is required right but the current cap out capacity will be lower because these are all in series not in parallel like in the uh, previous case where we had all the in the lap winding where we had all these coils being connected in parallel here it is all connected in series so the voltage adds up here so high voltage low current so this is a number of parallel path here a, a is equal to 2 so this is the next kind of armature windings what we have here so if you see this is shown out here so here in the lap winding you will see these are connected in parallel whereas here we have an a wave winding where this coil goes like this and then it goes like this so these are connected in uh, in series these these coils are connected in uh, series right now uh, the, the other part which this is known as the commutator okay this is the one uh, on to which a carbon brush is uh, put and this acts like an uh, split ring when, when generally we call a split ring when there is only uh, on a, a two uh, different sectors uh, and when we we call it a commutator when there are uh, n number of uh, sectors okay so two uh, sector commutator can be called as a split ring whereas here you have uh, n number of coils and n number of segments corresponding to each uh, uh, coil so this is known as an uh, this known as an uh, commutator or a split ring acts like a rectifier ac to dc so this is what it can conducts it be, it kind of rectifies the emf which is induced in these uh, coils okay now comes an a very very uh, important aspect the working principle of a uh, dc generator uh, suppose uh, i have an uh, electric field i have set up and i have given some dc supply uh, to the uh, field winding so it has generated a magnetic uh, field here now uh, i am driving this uh, core uh, in between the armature with the help of an uh, uh, dc engine okay uh, is a diesel engine suppose i am generating driving it with a diesel diesel engine right so it is going to initially have not uh, connected any load so there will be an uh, output emf which will be induced uh, say say 220 volts something output is generated out here right so what is the power which is uh, being consumed in the uh, output state 
it's going to be uh, zero because there's no you have not connected any load so uh, there is no current flowing here okay so there is uh, zero load so the zero power consumption oh, obviously i'm uh, we are neglecting the leakage and things like that okay uh, we are going to speak only about the major loads as of now so there is no load which is connected out here so there is an coil which is uh, armature which is uh, rotating and it is inducing an voltage out here but there is no current there we have not connected any load so zero power right and now say i connect 1k resistance out here a load a load some some bulb or something whatever a fan something which i am connecting out here so, so say the corresponding resistance is 1k so there will be some current which will uh, flow so what is going to be the power power is going to be vi or v square by r so 220 volt uh, v square by uh, 220 volt into 220 divided by 1k so that is the power which is being now initially it was zero current now i have connected 1k so the power has gone to some say some watts now instead of that 1k load i put uh, say 100 ohms okay now the power is going to be v square divided by uh, 100 ohms now the power is more so for different load conditions the power which is being consumed is different right so now we also know that the energy cannot be uh, created right or destroyed right so now if 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 we are going to consume uh, different powers for different uh, load conditions so uh, somewhere that additional power has to come from somewhere now where does it come from okay now you have a diesel engine which is going to uh, run this uh, machine right armature it is going to rotate this armature so initially when i am not uh, connected any load so it will be uh, almost uh, free so it can rotate this armature freely the moment i connect 1k resistance here some current will flow here okay so that current in the uh, coil will induce an magnetic field it will create a magnetic field out here okay because of the current which is flowing in the armature that magnetic field is going to oppose the magnetic field which is already there uh, because you have already passing some current into the field and you have created a magnetic field so there is one magnetic field because of the <coughs> excuse me because of the field current and now because of the armature current there is going to be another uh, field out here right so these two magnetic fields will oppose each other so now it will be uh, difficult for me to rotate this armature okay so the torque required to uh, rotate this armature will be more and if i have to maintain the same speed of rotation right i'll have to if i uh, what if i give the same fuel supply to the diesel engine this rpm is going to drop the moment i connect a load the rpm is going to drop because now it is more difficult to move this coil because there are two magnetic fields which are opposing each other so i'll have to pump in more number of fuel so i require a fuel governor or my diesel engine similarly if i change the load from 1k now to say 100 ohms more current will flow so more current will mean a stronger electric field created by the armature which will react again and which will oppose which will be opposed by the field magnet uh, field uh, current magnetic field so these two now they become uh, even more uh, stronger opposing each other so the torque required uh, to maintain uh, this rpm will be higher so what happens is now you can see uh, now what is happening right so as and when you are increasing the load conditions the a field which is created by the armature is increasing so it will become you require more torque to rotate and maintain the rpm so you need to pump in more fuel into your diesel engine so you see the law of conservation of energy uh, and it's it's now standing true out here in this condition right so uh, more energy is being consumed so more diesel will be consumed here while uh, so by the uh, diesel engine because you are connecting more electrical load out here so this is how the um, uh, the torque will be increased now if the torque is going to be increased it will it is going to consume more fuel to maintain the same uh, rpm right so uh, this is an, a small video so in earlier days uh, we had this uh, uh, governors uh, which used to uh, of the diesel engines uh, with mechanical governor so if you see uh, this is the drive from the engine let me uh, pause it here uh, uh, this is the drive which is coming from the engine this is a uh, uh, centrifugal uh, 
uh, ball okay this is uh, this is going to rotate here so now if the rpm increases this ball will uh, spread out and uh, out it will move uh, outwards and uh, from the axis of rotation here here it will with higher rpm so when that moves uh, outwards okay this uh, the, this particular revolve uh, lever will be uh, pulled up so when it gets pulled up you will find uh, this is the fuel flow path right so for low rpms you will uh, find that uh, this particular lever will be in in a uh, vertical position where it will allow only uh, it will be in a horizontal position for low rpm so that it will uh, allow more fuel for the rpm to pick up and when the rpm is going high it will block this uh, fuel passage so if i play the video it, it will be clear to you see it, it, it's an initially it, it's an uh, slow rpm so you will find this lever is almost uh, horizontal right now uh, slowly slowly the rpm is uh, being uh, picked up so if you see if you just wait for a few seconds you will see that the rpm is going to be uh, picked up now see the rpm has picked up so this will move uh, this, these balls will go further away and this plunger will be pulled up and this will uh, block the fuel passage so these kind of systems uh, we had an, an earlier uh, when everything was mechanically controlled in the diesel engines right uh, right now uh, you have everything electronic the speed sensor is uh, electronic and the fuel flow control is also uh, electronic so the, these kind of systems we had in our uh, earlier days so uh, let me move forward okay uh, now let's get into little bit of uh, mathematics of it okay uh, let's try to gen uh, try to uh, write an equation for the emf generated uh, in a generator okay uh, so uh, if uh, phi is the uh, flux okay uh, flux per pole okay so there are going to be n number of uh, poles and we are uh, assuming that uh, phi is the uh, flux which is generated uh, per pole now uh, this is actually a function of the field current you have to understand that this is if you uh, pump in more field current this will be uh, higher okay so this is a function of the field current so there is this, this is the flux per pole now z is the total number of armature conductors now uh, for for each uh, 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 total number of there will be n number of coils which are put in each slot right in each slot like what is a slot if i uh, go back here okay uh, let me see where is the armature yeah these are the slots so this is one slot second slot three slot and in each slot there are n number of uh, conductors right so coming back here uh, so uh, here also uh, you can uh, so this is the this is the field winding so the current uh, in this field winding will define the flux right and this is the armature this is the n number of conductors in each slot so there are one slot two slot many slots right so so coming back to this uh, equation uh, now here we have saying uh, a number of slots into number of uh, conductors that will be uh, z out here so uh, then you have uh, p is the number of generator poles okay so a is the number of parallel paths in the armature so that we have seen that is going to be uh, different for uh, uh, the two type of uh, windings for the lap winding and for the uh, and for the wave winding this a, a is going to be different n is the armature rotation in revolutions per minute okay this is the revolutions per minute e is the emf induced in any parallel path so, so it's a single parallel path we are seeing what is the going to be the voltage induced so uh, we know d phi by dt the rate of change of flux this is going to be the emf which is going to be uh, generated now in one revolution now how much flux will be uh, cut this is the flux per pole into number of poles okay uh, so this is going to be this much is the net uh, flux which is going to be a cut per revolution now uh, uh, now if you see a number of revolutions in uh, in, in per second it is given in rpm n so if you try to uh, do it in uh, in in seconds we will find uh, a, a 60 divided by okay at the time for one revolution is uh, 60 divided by n right so th these many uh, rpm divided by uh, uh, 60 divided by n so those many revolutions it will do per second now emf generated we can uh, modify that equation putting this value out here right so so number of conductors in parallel so those those are in parallel they'll uh, have the same emf so you need to divide that by a factor of 
a so if you put these things so these are available in all your textbooks if you see here this is the final emf uh, which equation which we have here right so uh, more than the actual uh, equations you have to uh, understand what is the effect so uh, how more emf can be generated that needs to be an, uh, understood here f uh, what is this phi okay this is what magnetic flux okay so if you have greater magnetic field you will have greater emf generated correct so how do you increase this by having more field currents right if you can uh, regulate the number of field currents you can increase the voltage out here what is that is that is the uh, number of uh, poles what we have right uh, or what we said number of armature conductors obviously if you are going to have a uh, more number of uh, 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 coils which are wound okay more number of coils means more voltage more emf so that is very very clear n is the number of uh, what is n is the speed of rotation obviously if you are going to rotate it uh, at, at a faster speed then it is going to cut more number of lines per second that is why that 60 has come down so it is going to uh, create more emf p means number of poles okay so so if there are more number of poles that also will uh, effectively mean it is going to cut more number of uh, magnetic uh, lines per revolution so that is going to uh, increase the net emf okay a is the number of uh, uh, coils which are connected in parallel so if you are going to connect in parallel that is not going to uh, help in generating more mf so you have to divide it by an uh, factor uh, a so a is 2 for wave winding and p for the lap winding okay so this proportionality you need to be very very uh, clear to understand the concepts okay phi is the flux how do you increase the flux by increasing the field current uh, z uh, we say is the number of uh, conductors per uh, number per slot okay so z so if you have more number of coils that means more number of uh, more emf will be generated uh, n is the speed of uh, rotation obviously if you are uh, rotating at a higher speed more voltage p is the number of poles more number of poles means more number of magnetic lines it is going to cut per revolution so this is what the uh, emf uh, equation now uh, we have different types of dc uh, generators right so uh, there is something known as separately excited dc generator here in the field coil you are going to use an uh, battery uh, and you are going to uh, that that supply voltage is independent of the output voltage which is available from the generator so this is a different power source which through which your field uh, uh, pumping in current into the field coil so this is a separately excited okay self excited means uh, the voltage which is generated out here okay the, the same voltage is used to um, uh, feed the uh, field uh, uh, coil also so the current is going to be from the output voltage which is going to be uh, generated by rotating this so yeah, you you might wonder uh, initially how will it start right initially before starting there will be uh, no output voltage if there is no output voltage there will be no current in the uh, field coil then uh, once you start how will it generate a voltage out there it will still generate a small negligible voltage because the core the cores will get uh, an, uh, an, uh, the field winding cores okay uh, they will be magnetized because of the current which was uh, flowing in that uh, coil uh, previous to shutdown of the engine so because of that there will be an uh, spurious uh, uh, magnetic field and and because of that small magnetic field and mag output voltage will start building up and that will again pull current into this coil uh, which will now uh, strengthen the magnetic uh, uh, field and then that will uh, it will act like a positive feedback loop and slowly slowly the voltage will build up uh, many a times uh, engines sometimes if that uh, voltage which is available in the core uh, the magnetic field which is available in the core uh, gets uh, a discharge for some reason uh, then uh, the, the these uh, generators may not uh, start off its own uh, you you will rotate the uh, uh, through a uh, through a engine but then voltage will not come uh, there will be no voltage output uh, provided here so in that case you need to give a uh, small uh, current externally initially you have that that's known as a flashing of the uh, field coil so if you flash a small current and then subsequently it, it, it will generate an uh, field and then then the voltage will pick up okay so here if you see the same output voltage is used to uh, provide currents into the field current so this is known as uh, known as the shunt in which it is uh, connected in the field coil is uh, connected in parallel to the voltage which is being uh, developed 
uh, here it is connected in series so it is known as known as a series so these all have got their own advantages and uh, disadvantages okay uh, here it is a uh, 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 compound in which you have series as well as parallel so there are uh, two kinds of this is known as the long shunt if in, in the long shunt you will see that the uh, parallel coil field coil is 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 after the series coil is connected to the armature out here you have a series uh, field coil then you have an a parallel coil here and it is known as the short shunt compound coil where you have an a field coil which is connected directly to the armature and then you have an a uh, series come so the load current is going to flow in this loop right here in this loop okay so the load current uh, flows um, here in this uh, in this the short shunt only the load current will uh, flow in the series uh, uh, coil whereas uh, here uh, you will have the current which is flowing in the parallel shunt as well as the load current which will flow in the series so that is the difference so each has got its own advantages and disadvantages uh, we will see that uh, soon very soon so this is an uh, separately excited uh, generator okay where uh, you have an uh, this is the field coil you are giving a separate source you have uh, you know you are now making an if flow into this field and creating a magnetic field here now if you see um, uh, the eg is the voltage which is generated by the armature okay now uh, that is the power which is generated here power which is delivered to the load will be uh, v into i right now but eg and v will not be the same okay there will be some voltage drop across the armature okay so now we are uh, going to learn a new terminology which is known as uh, armature resistance uh, what is this this is actually uh, when whenever there is a current which is uh, flowing in this armature uh, we told it is going to create an uh, magnetic field of its own so that magnetic field is going to uh, oppose this magnetic field so that, that so the, once it is going to oppose this magnetic field the net magnetic field is going to be uh, uh, reduced right so the emf induced will be uh, reduced so uh, how to uh, model that uh, reduced emf so uh, to model that reduced emf we called something known as ra which is known as uh, armature resistance so the voltage drop is modeled as ia into ra so what is this armature resistance this is an uh, this is this is not measurable directly with a voltmeter or something like that okay so this is only re representing the drop in the a magnetic field because of a current which is flowing in this armature that magnetic it is going to create a magnetic field that is going to oppose this magnetic field and cause a net drop in the magnetic field that we are representing it by an uh, figure something known as ra armature resistance okay so this you can't go and put a multimeter and try to measure the resistance when we try to measure a resistance you will get one resistance that is known as the uh, that is known as uh, ohmic voltage okay so that ohmic ohmic resistance so there will be an ohmic resistance also that also will contribute to voltage drop so the actual voltage drop which is going to happen when you are having a load connected is going to be in uh, two types okay that is shown in the next graph here now you as you keep increasing the load current out here right this is ideally a b that the output voltage should have remained constant but it will fall like this okay which is a d okay that ad fall is because of two components one is known as the armature reaction drop what is armature reaction drop because a current which is flowing into the uh, uh, which is flowing in the armature will create a magnetic field which will which will in fact reduce the total magnetic field so that is ac right that you can't measure ac okay you will be only able to measure uh, ad curve right as you keep increasing the current and also because uh, the ma actually these coils are supposed to be pure inductive but you can't have a uh, pure inductive coil uh, in the physical world right in, in in reality you can't have there will be some uh, ohmic drop because these coils will have will not have zero resistance but it will have a finite resistance it could be 1 ohms 2 ohms uh, whatever be the case 100 ohms or 2 uh, it, it will not be in 100 ohms it will be in few uh, ohms only so that ohm ohmic drop also will be there so the actual output voltage which you will be able to measure at the terminal will be uh, ad terminal is this okay so you can't put a voltmeter you will be putting a voltmeter across this terminal so v so this voltage what we measure 
is shown as AD. So as you keep increasing the load current, the output voltage will uh, keep dropping out here. Okay. Now in this case, in the, in all these graphs which we are going to see, we are assuming that the uh, RPM remains same. Okay. Since the RPM is remains same because that is taken care of the governor which is there in the uh, which is driving this armature. So in the diesel engine or the petrol engine which is driving this generator. Okay. So that uh, uh, RPM aspect and the power aspect it will be looked after by the uh, governor. Okay. We are only talking about the terminal voltages and assuming that uh, N is constant. Okay. The rotation is constant. Okay. So that needs to be uh, kept in mind. Okay. So this is how. But even if N is constant, we will see that with increasing load current the output voltage is going to uh, drop out here because of these two uh, armature reaction drop and ohmic voltage drop okay so now you have uh, separately uh, excited generated this is uh, one more graph which is showing that uh, with increase in if the voltage will uh, increase right yeah, this is the voltage output voltage so if we increase the we know that enough increase in if will uh, increase the magnetic field right so uh, this is for different rpms for greater rpm obviously the voltages will be uh, higher okay so this is rpm and uh, and on a, for a, for a given rpm also after sometimes okay the voltage gets saturated that is because if you keep increasing the field current it is not that that the magnetic field will keep increasing so after some time the magnetic you know, core will get saturated okay so all this uh, metallic material magnetic materials they get saturated after sometimes because uh, how is the magnetic field created because the uh, ions in these magnetic you know, material as you keep increasing the field currents they will get uh, aligned in in one direction as per the uh, current so uh, these cores they will uh, start behaving like a magnet but after a certain amount of current all the ions available in the metal metallic core will be aligned okay in the in in the uh, specified direction required direction after that it can it, it cannot uh, increase the magnetic field further more so that is how this is known as the core saturation once the core gets saturated uh, even if you increase the field current you will not uh, have any uh, increased in emf because the magnetic field essentially doesn't increase after certain field currents okay so uh, now uh, if you see here now how to uh, adjust the voltage but this is not a, a desirable condition this one right you don't want with increasing currents the voltage required and uh, it should drop you you should have a constant voltage so uh, how to do that so the, it is the, the trick is very very simple so as as the current increases out here right you have to increase the current in the field winding so uh, that is how that is known as uh, voltage regulation Okay, what is voltage regulation? Depending on the output voltage, the current in the field winding requires to be uh, adjusted. So, in olden days, we had something known as carbon pile registers. This is the photograph which I have shown out here. So, if you see the current, if the current, uh, this carbon pile is only variable resistance which is connected in series to the field uh, winding out here. Okay, so when more current uh, 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 used to flow, uh, uh, so there is a coil out here. Right, so this this output voltage and this is. so when the vol the voltage now drops, okay, the current in this coil decreases, right? Uh, okay, uh, in fact, uh, this is taken as a, uh, in series. This coil is connected in series with the uh, load. So when more uh, voltages. Uh, uh, more current flows into these uh, uh, coils out here right in the more current flow, co flows into this energizing coil it will uh, uh, pull these carbon piles closer to each other so the resistance decreases so if the resistance uh, decreases here more current will flow into the field winding so whatever uh, drop which was happening because of the increased load currents will get compensated by decrease of this resistance okay this was known as carbon pile resistors okay you understood what is this is an energizing coil okay so the load current is passed through this energizing coil of this uh, car it is in series this energizing coil there is an energizing coil which is in series with the load current so more load current means it, it will pull this carbon piles closer to each other so the resistance will drop so once this resistance this resistance is in this is the resistance okay uh, that is connected in parallel to the field winding now this when the carbon piles come close to each other resistance uh, decreases so uh, more current will flow into the field winding and it will compensate for the 
drop in output so this is how voltage regulation used to be done in the uh, earlier days uh, right now it is all done and uh, electronically you just current the sense and you regulate the you m make an uh, closed loop system with an op amp and things like that so uh, this this was all a mechanic kind of electromechanical things which was used a long time back uh, i don't know now even if this will be available in the market okay uh, so now you have the second uh, type of generators which is known as uh, DC shunt generator in which you have a uh, shunt coil which is parallel to the uh, armature. Now uh, if you see, try to write the equation the output voltage in, uh, E right uh, it is it is V plus IA into RA okay obviously here there will be some drop okay IA into RA. Right. Uh, this is actually uh, armature uh, drop and also the ohmic drop also you could consider that right now this ia uh, it is composed of two components one which is going into the load uh, load il and also the uh, shunt field current which is known as ish so i write il and ish so this is the uh, equation which is uh, written here so here you have an uh, shunt uh, field so if you see the characteristics out here now if you keep increasing the load current now what happens okay so uh, if you increase the load current uh, here in the if you increase the load current the, uh, the drop across the armature will be higher because iara drop okay uh, so the voltage available here will be lesser now so lesser voltage current means lesser sh uh, shunt current also right so uh, so as you keep increasing il the voltage will uh, keep uh, dropping here armature drop and armature drop uh, but after a certain point what happens is the engine will uh, wind down of its own because if you see if you keep increasing the load current if you keep increasing the load current the terminal voltage will drop because of the iara lower current will reduce the field current reduced field current will again reduce the voltage here lower voltage you know okay will again reduce the field current here so this will this is like kind of positive feedback loop out here so if you keep increasing the load beyond a certain value what happens is the shunt there will be more drop here more drop lesser field current lesser field current more drop here again here okay lesser voltage developed lesser voltage developed lesser field current so this will become a positive loop here and it will uh, shut down another it will wind off here so that is the problem with these you know, shunt generators okay so that is one issue now you have a dc series generator you have an, an, a series coil here in this coil right and in this the terminal voltage is uh, again uh, given as eg into minus i uh, ra plus uh, rsc this is the resistance of the uh, series field so that is uh, written out here now if you see uh, what happens here if you keep increasing the load current out here as you keep increasing the load current out here you are increasing the load current out here so more current will flow into the field current also so it will generate more voltage right if, as you keep decreasing the load currents okay keep uh, decreasing the uh, load resistance more current will flow here more current means more uh, field more field will more voltage so here if you see as you keep increasing the uh, oh sorry uh, as you keep increasing il you will find the voltage is increasing here so in the shunt it was decreasing in the series it will keep uh, increasing so this is a uh, different kind of a uh, problem out here okay so um, uh, so now what you have compound uh, 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 generators okay this is the general thing which we have in uh, most of our uh, practical DC generators where you will have a compound right so here you have one uh, series as well as uh, shunt both of these things so if you have if you see here uh, there are two types a short shunt and a long shunt so you will find the configuration is different out here right uh, here in the series uh, coil it the current in the series uh, here in the long shunt in the series field it, it comprises of the current which is going to, to the uh, load as well as in the uh, shunt uh, uh, coil also whereas uh, here uh, the series uh, coil in, in the series coil you have current only of the load okay so this parallel current is independent of the current which is going into uh, rse right in the series so this is the uh, two different so each has got its own advantages and uh, disadvantages now uh, you can uh, uh, depending on uh, how you make the series and uh, shunt coils you can have different uh, kinds of compound generators the behavior right uh, this is the ideal which ac the green dotted line which is known as the 
without any load also uh, without any load this is the ideal characteristics which it should be even with load it should remain like this uh, ac is kind of uh, kind of um, uh, practical thing which is achievable where with increase in load current more or less it will be uh, same right because now you are using a combination of parallel and series so so if you have your uh, series windings more stronger than the parallel you will have it is known as over compound where the output voltage will uh, slightly increase with increase in load current and if you have the parallel coil which is stronger than the uh, series one you will have something known as under compound where the voltage will tend to or uh, drop with increase in uh, load current okay so our target should be and try to achieve a, f a flat uh, compound okay so this is based on because this is a combination of a series and parallel so you need to accordingly uh, design your machine the number of turns in the series and the parallel uh, it, it should be in such a manner that you are getting an uh, almost uh, kind of flat curve okay Uh, so uh, these are some of the applications of uh, dc generators uh, separately excited generators they are used for a speed control of dc motors where you need to have uh, motors uh, 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 dc motors where uh, you need to uh, control the uh, speed so how to control the speed of the dc motors is by giving an uh, 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 dc voltage uh, okay, by controlling the dc voltage applied to these motors so to generate those dc motors uh, we generally use uh, separately excited generators okay uh, so uh, with separately excited generators the advantage is that we can have a wide range of terminal voltage okay so we can easily adjust the terminal voltage by adjusting the field current because it is separately excited since we are separately exciting it uh, we have an easy control of the field with us so by uh, doing that we can get a wide range of similarly for the self excited generators you have uh, shunt generators okay uh, they are generally used for synchronous uh, Uh, again for exciting the field of a synchronous machine so okay, we will learn about the synchronous machines in the next class so a uh, synchronous machines uh, to uh, uh, separately excite so we are going to uh, use uh, dc generators uh, these shunt generators to generate the voltage required for exciting the dc gen other dc generator separately okay uh, similarly for battery charging uh, because the terminal voltage are almost uh, constant or can be kept constant it it's used in electro uh, plating and exciters for ac generators so these are the use of uh, shunt generators and uh, series generators are used for a uh, series arc lighting and all right because if you keep increasing the uh, na, load na, the voltage will uh, na, increase and compensate for the drop so when you are doing a series uh, kind of an uh, Uh, lighting and all so this this is the kind of uh, series generators which we use and this is some uh, regenerator or uh, locomotives constant current for welding so these are some of the uh, applications of series generators and for uh, compound also a uh, few applications are uh, listed out here uh, so uh, since since we are not at, uh, familiar with uh, you know, all these uh, applications i have just listed it out so that uh, you know it and subsequently uh, may, we may revisit this once we have Uh, done with uh, rest of the uh, course also so with that i have finished the first uh, module uh, and uh, hopefully uh, soon i will uh, upload the uh, other modules of this uh, course also thanks a lot